Okay, I have a brand new effect to share with you that's using brand new ideas on my channel. So I've never done anything like this in the over 900 videos that I've recorded, okay? So as you can see here, I have 16 cards of various values, suits, and colors. So let's go ahead and gather those up. Um, now, since the two of us saw the cards, why don't we give it the cards a mix? Uh, this is just the Klondike Shuffle. I'm taking the top and bottom off as one. And then we can perform a mange over under or an under over. Which would you prefer? Over under or under over? Over under. Okay. So let me show you how that works. This next card goes over. Then under, over, under, over, under. Okay. Or we could have had that first card go under. And that would be an under over. Okay, very good. Now I need you to sound in here. I'm going to deal out the cards into four piles and I'm going to have you randomly stack the piles in whatever order you like. Okay, so that is something that we really have not done in a consistent way on my channel. Normally you have to st stack the top row and the bottom or vice versa and then left on right. Here it is true free stacking. So which pile should I pick up first? Top right, okay. Bottom left, bottom right, top left. Okay, so that's very much your choice, okay. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and deal them out in a different way, which is kind of cool, into like a clock configuration like this. So one, two, three, four. Okay. And what I thought we would do too here is go ahead and kind of mix each of these a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a manche over under for each of these, uh, just to scramble the cards in each pile. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing here. Now, you can freely stack these four piles. Which one would you like first? Bottom, center, top, okay, left, and then right. Okay, very good. And then why don't we do that one more time? I'm gonna go top, bottom, left, right. Top, bottom, left, right. <laughs> right, top, bottom, left, right. Okay, and now I'm going to mix each of these using something called the Charlie A1. And I can add a link in the description below. It's a great way to scramble the cards. It's a Charlier shuffle in which you move just one card at a time. That's all you're doing. Okay, now most importantly, I need you to tell me how to stack these. Far right, okay. Bottom center, top center, far left. Okay, whoa. Would you like me to deal out into four piles again? I kind of done it two ways. I did kind of a square configuration and then I did this triangle and then I did this funny top, bottom, left, right. Would you like me to do any more of those? Just the square one? Okay, so this is kind of a traditional uh, mixing for me, okay? And then what we could do or not do, it's really your choice, would you like me to mix the piles further using a very destructive shuffle? It's called the down under shuffle. The Australian shuffle is another name for it. You would, okay. So let me show you how that works. It's down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Let's see, down, under, down, under, down. Last one on top, down, under, down. And we, or we could have done an under, down, by the way, if you wanted, we could have done an under down or down under consistently, that would be just fine. Okay, and then how should we stack these final piles? Top left, bottom right, bottom left, top right. Okay, now here's your final choice, which is an important one. I can push off sets of four to create four piles of four from the top, or we can deal out four piles of four. We can just go from left to right if you like. So do you want me to push off sets of four or deal from left to right sets of four? Just push off? Okay. But just know that if you wanted to, uh, we could have dealt into four piles. Okay. So that would have been just fine. So there we go. So four piles of four. Oh, by the way, I do have a written prediction off to the side. And if you think about it, what could we possibly predict <laughs> about these piles? 
Well, let's see. So each pile will consist of exactly one club, one heart, one spade, and one diamond. Okay, I don't know what you think the chances of that are, but that doesn't sound very likely to me. Let's see, let's just take a look here. Uh, let's see, club, heart, diamond, spade. That one's looking pretty good. <laughs> what about this one? A spade, diamond, heart, club. That's good. Okay, did we succeed? Diamond, club, spade, heart. Oh, giving a sigh of relief since this is a brand new effect today here. Heart, spade, club, diamond. We absolutely nailed this written prediction. What's that? Oh, yeah, you're right. There is more here. And, and what? What could we say more than this? Just think about it. What could we possibly know beyond this? Well, let's find out. Each pile will have a different ordering of the four suits. There's just no way that could also be true. Well, let's see. Club, heart, diamond, spade. Does that repeat anywhere here? It doesn't look like it because there's not another club at the top. Um, see, spade. Spade, diamond, heart, club. Is that repeated anywhere? No. We don't have any other ones with spades on top. Um, and then diamond, club, spade, heart. That doesn't repeat anywhere as well as heart, spade, club, diamond. That ordering is unique. In fact, even more impressive than what I just showed you, each row consists of different card values. First row, these are all distinct. These are all different suits. And these are all different suits. How in the world could we have done that with all of the random choices that you made as the spectator? Okay, well, let's talk about this. Uh, well, I am very interested to hear back from people because I honestly, I did a, an extensive chat GPT-5 search to see if anywhere out there in the literature, in the books, in the journals, the magazines, anything, has anybody talked about what could reasonably be called a generalization of Bessie sequences or quasi-Bessie sequences. Bessie sequences deal with zeros and ones, so two symbols. Here we're dealing with four symbols, essentially. So I'm really interested to know, is this already known? Because according to ChatGPT, this is not known. This is brand new ground. It's opening a whole new area of research in mathematical card magic. I personally just have a hard time believing that that's the case that I've stumbled on another little branch that's never been explored. I mean, the chances of doing that twice in your lifetime is very small. So if you're already aware of what's driving this, why it works, please let me know uh, because I'm in the process of writing a academic article to present the mathematics. Okay, so how do you do this? Well, it's actually fairly easy to do. So let me just show you really quickly. So what you need to do first, is just separate uh, the suits, okay? And we're going to create something called a four by four Latin square, is what we're gonna do. So we have club, heart, spade, diamond. Okay, so all you need to do is just deal out the cards into four piles in some kind of rotational consistent order. Well, actually here it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can deal each level in any order because each level consists of the same suit for the cards. Okay, so now what you do, we're almost ready as far as the setup. Leave the first one, what, whichever one you want to start with, leave it alone, identify a second one, and move the top card to the bottom. Identify the next one, or third one, move two cards to the bottom. And then for the final one, move three cards to the bottom, random stack these, and you are ready. And then everything I showed you is going to work perfectly as is, okay? So here we're using what's called a four by four Latin square in mathematics. 
And according to ChatGPT5, no one's ever used them in mathematical card magic, which I personally have a hard time believing. So anyway, that's the secret behind it. And so if you do everything I did, this will work for you perfectly. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.